definitely one of my favorite scenes to write. Even I didn't know the solution. And the thing that really helped me with this was... I don't want to spoil it for you. Hello, hello dear friend, and welcome to the second Outline With Me video, Outlining Act 2. As you might have noticed, this video took me a really long time to put together, and that's because Act 2 was extremely hard to get through. I experienced the weirdest thing which was I started each day trying to work on Act 2 and end up making progress only on Act 1. It was kind of crazy because at the end of the day I knew I had come up with things, I knew I had solved problems and made progress, but it wasn't visible because if you don't know, I had already finished Act 1, I finished it weeks ago. But Act 2 just wasn't letting me in for the longest time. This went on until I finally had a breakthrough, but said breakthrough was triggered by something and I'm going to tell you what it was. Because Act 2 was taking so long to outline, I was seeing my writing schedule being pushed back. I was supposed to have drafted this book in March, but here I was at the beginning of the month still agonizing over the outline of Act 2. At some point, my head got really fuzzy and I started feeling lost in what I was doing. So, what I did was, I sat down with my writing schedule and figured out what exactly I had to do each day to stay on track. The idea was, if I realized I was too behind, I would change my writing schedule to fit something more doable in my situation. But what happened was that I realized I needed only to push draft zero back one month and I could still finish it on time and it wasn't even that much to do each day. In order to finish the outline in March, each day I had only to outline four scenes. The day after I had this realization, I felt much more sure of what I was doing and boom, I finally broke into act 2 and outlined 18 scenes in one day. So if you're struggling to make progress and you're feeling overwhelmed, perhaps try to figure out exactly how much progress you want to make each day and make sure you're not giving yourself irrealistic goals. Make it measurable and make it attainable. All right, on to the bits of Act 2. I already talked a bit about the break into two in my previous video, outlining Act 1, but basically in this bit, the protagonist actively steps into the world the book is really about. Harry Potter moves to Hogwarts, Katniss Everdeen enters the arena, Louisa Clark starts her new job. If I had to guess why I struggled to get into Act 2, I would say it's probably because of the gap that is between the catalyst and the break into 2, which in my book it's a really big gap. And I wasn't sure how I could express the time in between these two beats in a way that would make the break into two really natural, like a natural consequence of act one. In the end, I think I found a solution, but I'm still not 100% sure about it, so we'll see it might change in the future. When the protagonist arrives in Act 2, one of the first characters they meet is the B-story character, the one who will help them learn the theme of the story, whether they want it or not. The B-story character is often a love interest, 
a friend or a mentor, but it could also be the antagonist of the story. This character is meant to represent the world of Act 2, which is why many will tell you they're not supposed to exist in Act 1, but I don't agree with that, I think it's too formulaic. My B story character is in fact a result of Act 2 world, but I won't go into it just now because I don't want to spoil it for you. The first pinch point is not part of the Save the Cat pitch sheet, and that's because even though I mostly use Save the Cat terms to refer to different points of story structure, I actually don't stay faithful to any particular structure. This is because my favorite stories are not the ones that feel structurally perfect, which I've seen a lot of in recent media, but the ones which manage to surprise me and make me feel things. It's strange because I'm too much of a perfectionist, certainly too much for my own good, but when it comes to storytelling, I tend to prefer stories that deviate from the norm in some way. There are many different story structures you can learn from, but remember you can always create your own. So, I'll tell you a little about the first pinch point. The idea of this bit is that the protagonist gets a taste of what the villain is capable of, what the protagonist is really up against. Sometimes it's done directly with interaction between the two, other times the taste is simply given to the reader and the protagonist only deals with the consequences and that way has a glimpse of what the conflict is. In my novel this bit is truly life-changing, which is weird because Back when I outlined the story, I didn't have it. But at the moment, it allows me to connect timeline 1 and timeline 2 seamlessly, so I'm really happy about that. And it's just one of those moments that feel right. I've heard the midpoint being called the heart of the story before, and I completely agree. If I didn't live for the ending of the story, I would live for the midpoint. It's just the kind of moment that makes you feel all the feelings and decide this is your favorite book in the whole entire world. At least that's how I feel about my novel's midpoint. So, this bit is often called the moment of truth, and there is typically a revelation that raises the stakes and changes absolutely everything for the protagonist. It's also a moment where the A story, the plot, and the B story, the character arc, ultimately meet and can no longer be separated. For a long time I struggled with the idea of the midpoint and that's because when I first started learning about story structure, I don't know how I got this idea, but I got the idea that the midpoint was the climax. And even though it is in a way a climax, the real climax of the story is in Act 3. So for a while this really messed with my mind and with my idea of story structure. 
and even to this day I put a lot of emphasis on this beat, the midpoint. It's one of my favorites of all time. I always make it really breathtaking. It really becomes one of the story's main scenes and of course I love that but the consequence is that then when we arrive at the real climax a lot of times, especially in my outline or my zero draft or first draft, the real climax is not as climatic as the midpoint is. And that's something I'm definitely still trying to fix in my writing. But yeah, in the midpoint of my stories, almost everything changes for the protagonist. I mean, of course, the theme doesn't change and the character journey doesn't change, but there's usually a revelation in here that just destroys everything they thought was true. Even though this beat is one scene only, I see it as the amalgamation, the climax of multiple scenes that exist around it. So in this moment there are plot twists, victories and defeats, just very intense changes in the direction that the story is going. So yes, the midpoint definitely doesn't happen in isolation, definitely one of my favorite scenes to write and I'm really happy with the idea I have for this particular story's midpoint. Next, we have the bad guy's cuisine, aka problems, problems and more problems. So far, the protagonist has been trying to solve the conflict the wrong way and now they have to deal with the consequences of their wrong actions. So this is one of the beats that's been giving me the most trouble so far. From the midpoint on, it's kind of downhill for me because, first of all, it just took me a really long time to figure out how things could go from the midpoint on. And the thing that really helped me with this was remembering that I have multiple subplots to develop still. So the side characters and their subplots have been on my mind this whole time, of course, but this is where I really felt the need to develop them. So of course, everything the protagonist does up until this point and from this point on has affected everything that surrounds them. So all of the characters in their community in this world. So those characters shouldn't be passive, they should react to what's being done to them and what's being done around them. And so what really helped me in this beat was having those characters react to what the protagonist has been doing so far. So in this beat, my protagonist is dealing with a lot of the consequences of what he's done so far, so at the moment he already knows some of his actions were not the best ones and now he's dealing with it while still trying to make progress in their goals, which is of course really demanding and at this point it's really starting to wear him down. Pinch point, which is also not part of the Save the Cat beat sheet, but which always helps me see the story under a new light. Much like the first pinch point, here the antagonist force takes a major role and raises the stakes once again. So my second pinch point includes yet another reveal that's just burying my protagonist deeper down. The thing about the reveals is that they shouldn't come from nowhere, you know, something should trigger them, otherwise it will feel like the protagonist is too passive in some moments. But yeah, this reveal is kind of like a hammer to the head or a slap on the face. 
and at this moment it's making it feel like things can't go worse for the protagonist but of course they can and they will because right after this comes the all is lost moment All is lost is really all is lost. The protagonist has hit rock bottom. They are the furthest they can be from achieving their goals and at this point it seems impossible to achieve them at all. So I knew what my all is lost moment would be pretty early on but for a while I struggled with figuring out what would come next because my all is lost moment really feels like all is lost like even i didn't know the solution for this i felt like there was no solution because it wasn't something within my protagonist's control and i also had trouble figuring out how they would react to this because you know in the break into three they need to make a decision but I wasn't sure how they would come to this decision from the all is lost moment. So, yeah. I know in Act 3 they will have to take action, but at this moment they just... they're exhausted, they feel like giving up, they don't know where to go from here, and I hope I do know. I'm not sure if it's going to work out, but we'll see. The Dark Knight of the Soul is meant to get to the essence of the protagonist and the theme they have to learn. They can no longer believe the light that's brought on all their problems, because only the truth will allow them to get out of this stage. However, when they look deep within themselves and finally accept the truth, it's not pretty, they don't like what they see. By accepting the truth, they're also accepting all of the mistakes they've made so far, and that will allow them to see things under a new light. And so we arrive at the end of Act 2, the break into 3, the moment the protagonist finds a possible solution to the impossible problem they're facing. So the break into three is another bit which I really struggled with, so you can tell that from the midpoint on this is kind of a trend, but the reason why I struggled with this aside from what I already told you about the all is lost is because the idea that I have for this moment is really passive in my opinion, it doesn't really feel like a break into three. And I don't know if that's because the scene itself is still not developed in my mind and maybe I can come up with an active way to express this decision that my character makes in the break into three. Uh, but at the moment it's just not my ideal break into three and I'll definitely have to do something to improve it. But for now I do know what happens, I just don't know how it happens and how I can make it more active and interesting. So what I think I will do is I will leave it be for now and you know once I write the zero draft I'll see if I can come up with something, if not I might have to change this idea. But yeah for now let's just see if it works somehow. Alright, so that's it for today's video. Thank you so much for joining me on this writing journey. I hope it's been helpful to you or inspiring at least. And I hope to see you in my next video. Bye!